Welcome back, uh, dear viewers, and uh, you are still watching The Breakfast Show. And in this uh, segment of our program, we will talk about the dangers, the dangers of uh, desertification and the government efforts to combat uh, this uh, phenomenon and promoting and developing environmental awareness uh, for people's governments, decision makers, and civil society organizations. And today we are joined by Mrs. Amira Saeed, journalist and the managing editor uh, of uh, uh, the Egyptian Gazette is also uh, responsible of uh, the uh, climate uh, file in uh, the African uh, Union. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, can you uh, tell us uh, more about uh, desertification, uh, to what extent it is threatening Egypt? Uh, okay, uh, so um, actually Egypt has a border strategy to curb and uh, combat uh, desertification mm. and actually uh, it's very important to highlight that this effort, especially uh, now is to up for uh, uh, COP27, uh, which for the first time it will be held in, uh, in Egypt. Hmm. And, uh, actually, Egypt has a great effort um, in, in this uh, field, whether um, on level of like, uh, scientific research, actually Egypt has been making a stride in uh, the field of scientific research, uh, the new solutions in order to face uh, desertification. And actually, on a uh, practical uh, uh, level, we have seen that Egypt has uh, actually uh, trying to expand uh, its, uh, um, we can say, uh, green um, uh, areas in order to um, uh, combat uh, desertification. Yeah. Yes. So uh, do you think that uh, desertification is uh, expected uh, to be tackled in the coming uh, COP27 uh, the, uh, conference expected in uh, November? Yeah, definitely. Actually, many topics that will uh, be discussed in this uh, important uh, event, whether we are talking about uh, desertification, biological uh, bi or um, biodiversity, uh, if you are talking about the climate finance, these issues, they are like connected to um, uh, each other. If we are talking about uh, uh, facing desertification, actually, desertification is considered one of the key issues that contribute to uh, the severe impact of uh, climate change. So it's very important to combat desertification. Yeah, so this is what will be discussed. Yeah. Yes, uh, Mrs. Amira, also, if we uh, talk uh, about uh, um, uh, youth uh, and uh, the effective role they can play in facing environmental problems and climate change issues, how can we engage them uh, in this issue? Yeah, um, as I told you, uh, when we are talking about the impact of this situation, it's also very important to highlight the solutions to face this problem. And actually, uh, now if we are talking about uh, uh, engaging youth in decision maker and making process, um, it's very important to uh, like empower them and give them uh, the um, um, full opportunity to share their concerns and uh, views as uh, well. And actually, if we are talking about education, we have to see that many uh, like uh, creative solutions to fix uh, this uh, problem. Even in life, for example, we are talking about uh, water challenges, for example, uh, maybe the, the other loving to hide the public part in order to increase uh, uh, green lands and also facing desertification. And actually, even, uh, even we are talking about, uh, uh, you mentioned that if this topic will be discussed in COP27, before COP27, there will be um, a summit for youth, which is COVID-19, uh, which, which will be held just before the COP27. And I think this topic also will be on the uh, agenda. Yeah. Uh, I think also that desertification is uh, threatening uh, the African continent uh, in general. And as uh, you are responsible for this file in the African uh, Union, can you tell us about uh, the measures taken to combat it in Africa? Yeah. Um, uh, actually, um, though Africa uh, in general um, is the least, we are talking about uh, the link between climate change and desertification. Uh, though Africa is uh, contributing with the latest percentage to the global uh, emissions, to the uh, most vulnerable to the impact of uh, climate uh, change. And actually, if you are talking about desertification, it has also um, a direct impact on the issue of food security. And that's why the African Union is giving a top priority to this fight in order to increase the uh, demand and also to curb the impact of desertification as it has a direct impact on food security. If we are talking about the African Union Agenda 2063, which is 
uh, which is part of uh, the South of the Africa we want. We are uh, thinking that Egypt, uh, that uh, the African Union in general, and Egypt also in particular, especially when it was chairing the African Union in 2019, highlighted uh, this important uh, uh, file. Actually, now we have seen many steps in order to also to enhance cooperation between Arab countries to face the um, impact of desertification, uh, 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 in order to also enhance the, re uh, the regional economic integration. So yes. actually, there are many dimensions when we are dealing with this file, the economic dimension. Actually, as I told you, it has a direct impact on uh, food security. That's why given the priority whether in uh, um, African agenda 2060 or Egypt version 2030. So uh, also, if we talk about uh, uh, water and uh, uh, water security strategy adopted by the Ministry of Irrigation, which is represented in water purification, dealing with the solid uh, waste and garbage, rationalizing water, uh, mm -hmm. and developing crops uh, tolerant of temperatures and drought. How do you see this strategy? Yeah, uh, uh, actually, in light of... Uh, um, the growing the challenges facing, facing the issue of uh, water security, it was very important to find um, like um, solutions and alternatives in order to ensure food security and including the Greenland. That's why I told you that it has two uh, dimensions. The first one, if we are talking about uh, the solutions, um, uh, now there have been many efforts in order to um, uh, find new varieties of uh, uh, agricultural crops that can um, face uh, water challenges and also the can uh, we can say uh, endure, for example, um, um, the harsh climate uh, uh, conditions. So now in the field, the agricultural ministry and its uh, the agricultural uh, scientific research is making great strides in this domain and finding new varieties that can like endure and um, uh, the same face uh, the, uh, the current uh, challenges, whether the climate change or water scarcity. Uh, um, and actually, if we are talking about hydroponic farming, which, uh, which doesn't rely on uh, water, this is also another way. And actually, we have seen also many strides in uh, this domain. So whether uh, practically or from scientific research uh, perspective, uh, we have seen that uh, Egypt's strategy uh, um, is trying to improve the current situation in light of growing challenges. Yes, uh, also uh, World Day to combat uh, desertification and drought uh, is a United Nations uh, observance celebrated each year on the 17th of June. And yes. its purpose is to raise awareness of the presence of desertification and drought. How was uh, this uh, day uh, that marked uh, this year? Yeah. Um, as I told you, actually, this is a global uh, challenge. When we are talking about uh, uh, desertification, we are not just talking about uh, Africa, Asia, or Europe. Actually, this is uh, a global uh, challenge, uh, a global challenge in light of also the climate change uh, uh, challenges. That's why the uh, United Nations dedicated uh, a full day to uh, combat desertification and drought. Uh, 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 and actually, its purpose is uh, to raise awareness of the presence of desertification and also highlighting the methods of um, preventing uh, desertification and recovering from uh, uh, those. So actually, it's very important to raise uh, awareness on international level and order to drive collective action towards this fight. Uh, uh, also, how do you see uh, preparations uh, by the government to host uh, the COP27 in uh, November and the files uh, that are expected uh, to be tackled in this important uh, uh, conference? Yeah, um, actually, um, we can call it Africa's uh, COP because it will be held here uh, in Egypt, uh, in Africa. So it will be focused on mm. the needs of the African uh, continent. As I told you, though, Africa is the most vulnerable to the impact of climate change. It is the least equipped to cope up with such a severe uh, impact. Uh, the issue of climate uh, finance also it will be given a top priority, and Egypt is trying to move mm. from bridges into, um, into real action to move from just uh, a of the bridges that were taken and not to any fixed in Glasgow into real uh, uh, action. And actually, even in this regard, it has launched unprecedented initiatives in order to uh, mobilize climate finance, is to launch five regional round things in order to 
um, enhance the participation of the sector and donors in the issue of climate finance. The first round uh, took place um, actually earlier this month in Addis Ababa in uh, Ethiopia uh, with the participation of Egypt's climate champion, Dr. Mahmoud Mohi El uh, Bouf. And there will be more, uh, four more round tables that will uh, be taking place in the upcoming two that went with uh, September. So uh, this is uh, regarding um, agenda or the main topic that will be highlighted. Uh, yes. Regarding the preparations uh, of for COP27, actually the government is uh, following up on these preparations um, uh, um, on daily basis. We have seen many meetings by Prime Minister Papa Majid with all ministers in order to uh, ensure everything is uh, uh, adequately uh, prepared. Whether we are talking about infrastructure, if we are talking about logistics, and actually, if we are talking about change that will go to the COP27, the government has announced that uh, uh, this will be turned into a green city uh, as the city COP27. And uh, there will be uh, like a green transport that will be used uh, uh, throughout the period of COP27 uh, and beyond. And this is actually uh, the role of Egypt. It wants to enhance climate action in the run up to and during and beyond the COP27. Also, uh, for the first time in the history of COP, Egypt has appointed a certain envoy to represent youth. Now we have COP27 youth envoy, which happened for the first time this year in the year. And I'm wrong. So actually, Egypt already is taking great steps in this uh, domain. And I think that COP27 is a turning point in the history of that. Yeah. Yes, finally, I'd like to thank you, uh, Mrs. Amira Said, journalist and managing director of the Egyptian Gazette. She's also responsible of the climate file in the African Union. I'd like to thank you. And uh, by that, dear uh, viewers, we come to the end of uh, today's edition of The Breakfast Show. Thank you for watching.